All right, everybody, so this video isn't really gonna be like a politics segment necessarily. It's actually gonna be a little bit of a Xander Hall story time segment that I feel like will be a, a nice wholesome way to start off this stream. And, uh, you know, it'll give time for people to kind of come in and, and get ready for the Andrew Tate segment, which I imagine a lot of people will come here for. Um, but I was watching YouTube earlier today and uh, I had a Tom Scott video pop up with my recommended, which isn't unusual. I've, I watch Tom Scott quite frequently. And uh, I, I clicked the video and I realized very quickly, holy sh he He did a video at the spring that I worked at when I was 16 years old, when I was a lifeguard there. And it was a pretty great video too. Um, and I, I decided what better way to kind of tell you guys some cool stories about when I was a lifeguard um, than to use this Tom Scott video as sort of like a jumping off point. This video was filmed back in 2018, just two years after I was a lifeguard there. So things look, you know, very much the same. Not that they change much there, you know, regardless, but um, there's so many cool stories I have to tell about it. And uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll start by saying... Um, Back when I was 16, or, or technically back when I was 14, they did this thing at uh, Wikiwachi Springs where there was this camp that you could go to, like a summer camp type thing, where they trained you to be a lifeguard. Like, even you weren't old enough to be a lifeguard, and you couldn't get certified, but they gave you the training, and that was the and, and it was a camp. And the idea behind it was that, like, you do that camp, like, one or two times before, you know, you're 16, and you can work legally and you're almost guaranteed to get the job if you apply. So that's what I did. Two years in a row, two summers in a row, I went to that camp and I did the lifeguard training and I aced it both times. And then finally when I was 16 and I was finally old enough to get a job, I was like, lifeguard there, lifeguard, I wanna be a lifeguard there. I applied, I did, I obviously, they accepted my application, but then they did a trial where they were like, okay, we gotta kinda whittle down the applicants now, so we're gonna do, you know, some tests and, and, and training, and if you're not able to keep up, then you're not going to get the job. And, you know, I, I kept up quite well. It was like, who swims the fastest? I did. Um, as a matter of fact, I guess we could start with the, uh, the first story right here and now. Uh, right here, at this point, behind him is where the swim area starts. And what we had to do for our swim test was swim from this little like buoy area here all the way down the river to the end of the lazy river and whoever reached it first granted you're going with the current too so it is really really not hard um to like go quickly it's not like you could kind of drift if you knew what you were doing um but yeah whoever got there you, you didn't have to like it wasn't a race but it was like a you got to be able to do it in a decent amount of time because if you can't cover that much water fast like, relatively fast, you can't save anybody while they're drowning, you know? Let's watch this. God, I, like, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen this exact view in real life that this camera is focused on. It is so crazy. I've stood where he is standing hundreds of times. Hundreds of times I have stood where he is standing right now. This video is called There's a Mermaid Show in Florida. This is not an artificial swimming pool, and it's not for- I, I'll, I'll play it like in chunks, but I, I have to- I have to talk about things as I see them, okay? So here is the slides, okay? I don't know what they have this lifeguard wearing right here. I don't know why he's wearing, like, kind of green, tan, whatever that is. That's unusual. Is that Ocala? No, this is in uh, Hernando County. Um, so these are actually three slides right here, okay? This one, this long blue one, we called that the racing slide. There's usually a lifeguard at the bottom. You can see he's holding a flag. And on one side is a green flag, and one, on one side is a red flag. And we use that flag, I'll bring myself back, we use that flag to signal the lifeguard at the top of the slide whether or not it's safe to send someone else down. You can see there's a little, like, buoyed area down here, and these are little, like, cropped off areas for the slide, like, output to make sure no one swims into, like, the, the way of someone coming down the slide. This one, um, I believe this one's called Pirate's Revenge. It's Pirate's Revenge, but some people just call it the, the curly slide. And uh, there's also a, a guard chair up there, and there's a, another lifeguard post right here, but it's this chair. 
you can see this chair right here is the bottom post and you would basically just give a thumbs up like you just give a thumbs up when the person's gotten out of the way and you can send another person down the person on the top gives a thumbs up and then sends another person down the slide and the top one here or this far right one here is called the cannonball this is the scariest of the slides it is also the most fun it just goes pretty much straight down and it doesn't go into the spring it goes into like a little long trough that slows you down with sort of like ankle deep water um and it's pretty scary but yeah you there's a lifeguard that thing there and we would cycle through all these posts and down there down this way you can barely see it is the lazy river and this is all just like seating area and swimming area all right i'm gonna rewind it now this is not an artificial swimming pool and it's not filled with chlorinated treated water this is a natural spring in Wikiwachi, Florida, and it's at the top of a massive system of caverns where the Wikiwachi River surfaces. Hundreds of millions of litres of water forcing its way out the ground every day. But while the spring might be natural... They paid me $15 an hour. My, my pay at this place before taxes and like before, because it was a uh, government job, before they would pull like uh, like the like they're, they're like they, I think it was for social security before they'd pull that percentage out of my paychecks it was like fifteen dollars an hour as a lifeguard there and I used the money I made working as a lifeguard there to make to get my first PC and to build my first PC which I ended up using to do content on YouTube and getting where I am today it was the money I made from this job that got me where I am now. For Florida, it looks pretty cool. This is very crystal clear water. It's fresh water. It's coming out of the earth. What's this is the airlock right here. You'll see it underwater in a minute, and I've got a story to tell about that. A painful story. Going on under the surface definitely isn't. It's created by humans. Because for more than 70 years, there's been a mermaid. Uh, and so this is the entrance into the mermaid theater, okay? So this is the way the park is laid out is there's Buccaneer Bay. And that's the lower part of the park. That's what you were just seeing images of earlier where all the water is. And then when you come into the park, there's a ramp kind of thing that leads up into sort of a more wooded area where they've got shops and stores and everything. And that's where this is. You enter here and it's, it's sort of a ramp that leads down. There's a pair of doors in here and that leads to a theater. And you're about to see what, what that theater shows you. It's really cool. Made show here. Toughest show part of the job. That window that is next to her is exactly what you think it is. I definitely think it's training. It took me about six months to swim my first show. Once you get hired, you get scuba certified, and then you can start on the hose, which that's the process. So, this is the mermaid show. You can't really see much of the auditorium inside, but this is a theater with a bunch of glass windows that view out into the spring you can see the fish you can see the rock this is basically built into the cavernous like entrance to the spring so they are swimming around and all this rock around them is basically the opening of a massive chasm into the earth i've watched this mermaid show a few times it's not my like i don't i don't care much about the show or the the thing it's just cool seeing people swimming around and seeing the fish and the turtles and sometimes a manatee will swim in very rarely um, but there's there's a lot of animals that are just swimming around. These are um, this is snapper. I believe this is mangrove snapper. We're, I'm going to show you guys all my uh, Florida fish identification skills. These are mangrove snapper. You can tell because the little they've got like black eye shadow. Mangrove snapper, uh, unlike other snapper, have black eye shadow on their eye. This it takes the longest learning how to breathe and be comfortable down there. It takes a lot of breath control and building your lungs. Okay. I have, to I have to get rid of the chat for just a second so you guys can see this. Do you guys see this dome here? You see that dome? That half dome, I guess I should say. It's like a half circle. There's air coming out of it, air bubbles. That is an airlock. That is where the mermaids change into their outfits and into new outfits during scene changes. They basically blast bubbles over the, uh, the glass so you can't see through, and they go in there and they change. It can fit roughly eight people in there. It's a lot bigger than it looks. It's a lot bigger than it looks. But it's also a lot deeper than it looks. You can see the bubbles floating up to the surface there. That looks like, from here, from my vision, I would say that's like five feet deep, maybe six feet deep. It doesn't look that deep, does it? Wrong. 
That is about 16 feet deep, my friends. 16 fucking feet deep under there, which means they're around 30 feet deep here. They're very far down there. So, um, what me and my friends ended up doing after our training for lifeguards and, and after like a week of working there, it was a, uh, a day that we closed fairly early because it was a holiday and we'd clean the place up and we didn't need to like evacuate out of the, um, we didn't need to evacuate out of the park because we had a while to just kind of hang out because we'd finished our work and the park was just kind of empty. And we we're like, you know what? Let's go for a swim. So we swam over the spring and we decided we're going to dive down to the airlock because it's clear. You can see out of it, um, sort of. It's not super clear. It's actually really musty and stained, but you can kind of see out of it. And it's like you can stick your head under the water and look around. It's, it, you get air and all that. So we wanted to go down there. We thought it'd be cool. Um, friend of mine who was there with me is diver certified, okay? That's important to know in a minute. I was not at the time, and I hadn't done much deep diving before. So like a fucking fool, I dive down with them. And I start to feel a lot of pain in my ears around halfway there. You know, right around this point, I'm like, this really hurts. Around the time, around the point where my head is like, at this point, I'm like, this really hurts. And so I get inside because there's no going back up to the surface at this point, And... It is echoey as hell in there. It is so echoey in there. It is, it, it, you know the scene in um, The Walking Dead where Rick fires the gun inside the tank in the first episode and his vision like is blurred. He, his hearing so fucked in that moment. That is what it was like. I experienced that. And it hurt so bad because everyone was talking and everyone was loud. But John, my friend... Uh, the name not spelled how it sounds. Um, he was the diver certified one. And he was like, dude, 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 everyone stop. Everyone be quiet. Alex, do this. I was like, and I saw what he was going for. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And so I immediately, because I, I know how to equalize my uh, pressure in my in my head. I just didn't, I, I, just, I just forgot to. Um, and so I, I, I went ahead and I equalized and it immediately made most of the pain go away. I was back to like, being okay and we had a fun old time down there and we did some sw like we would go down and swim around in this area around here and then go back to the airlock and then eventually it started to get kind of dark and creepy because the sun was setting and so we we very promptly uh went back to the shore and 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 got our got our ate the remainder of our lunches and and went home but yeah that was a fun day uh painful like a pain that i will never forget but really fun so that's my story about the airlock Lungs, teaching your lungs and g stretching them and getting them used to holding the air. The longest we hold our breath is a Ferris wheel. That's when we hold each other and we like spin around. The water is 74.2 degrees year round. It's Wait, really? I thought it was 72. That's some bullshit. They told me it was 72 degrees. It's 74 degrees, apparently. So, so some of you guys in chat, that doesn't sound very cold, but to Floridians, that is freezing, okay? It is really cold. And a hell of a shock when you're, like, used to Florida weather to step into the 74-degree water. Very cold being in there. We have approximately 20 to 25 young women on staff who perform as mermaids. We also... A lot of fish here. They have, like, a whole set in the opening of the spring here. And, like, I, I don't know if you guys even know this, but, like, this is putting off so much water... And it's such fresh, crystal clear water being pumped out of the Florida aquifer, which is basically this layer of, like, porous limestone that Florida is built on. Um, this water is pushed down river, and it's a very sandy, white river. with a, And it's very clear for miles and miles and miles down that river. And there, once you get to a certain point, there are houses with canals built along the river, and the water that those that those houses are on is also pretty damn clear because it's coming from this. It's not this clear, but it's pretty close, like maybe 20% murkier, like 20% less visibility than this has. And this is absurd visibility. Anyone here who knows like water visibility and diving and whatnot knows this is really good visibility um, for water. But yeah. 
For YouTube watchers, context of what we're talking about, some said that sailors redacted manatees because they wouldn't fight back. Oh yeah, my understanding is that like the manatee is the origin of the the myth of the mermaid, almost certainly. Yeah. Like knowing how fucking degenerate sailors would have been back then, you know they were fucking manatees. There are definitely manatees like scores of manatees that were raped by by sailors in like ye old times. Probably even still today, which is sad to think about. Humanity's only gotten more fucked. Manatussy, Jesus Christ, Miss Nibiru. Also have about three or four gentlemen. They play the role of the prince in our version. Oh, look at that sheep's head. Okay, you can't really see it because it's behind that, that pillar, but that's a sheep's head, the striped one. Version of the Little Mermaid. This place is the work of a man called Newt Perry, world-class swimmer and swimming coach, former diver for the US Navy, and consultant. That is so fucking dope. That That is so cool. His little diving bell, like, thing that he can sit in. That's really cool. Consultant to Hollywood. He looked at this spring and thought... Uh... What? There was a movie they filmed here. Was it Tarzan? It, they, they talked about it a lot, but I forgot. I think they filmed, like, Tarzan here. Like, uh, uh, maybe it was a horror movie. Like, Creature from the Black Lagoon or something they filmed here. You know, it was always crazy when the sun started to go down, you could hear the howling of the skunk apes. That was always really freaky. We had to, like, make sure to get all of our work done really quick. Because when you, when you work at these, like, parks out in the middle of nowhere in Florida, the skunk apes start screaming around 8.30 to 9 p.m. And you, you don't want to be around once those things start screaming. What what is a skunk ape? You don't know what a skunk ape is? Like if you're if you're a Floridian, you know, like you you stay up late and you keep your window open at night and you might hear them just screaming from the woods. Yeah, they're they're pretty freaky. I could put a show on in there. The first theater had 18 seats, but by the 60s Look at that sheep said. There it is, little stripey boy. The ABC Television Network had bought the place and Ooh. Jack, there's Cavalia Jacks there. Those are you. Those are saltwater fish that that came up into the spring. Here, look where. Look right here. You can tell by their tail shape. These are some Cavalia Jacks that went upstream into the freshwater. I didn't even know they did that. It had 18 seats, but by the 60s, the ABC Television Network had bought the place. They they're kind of tuna shaped. That's really cool. And built a theater for 400. And it was selling out. Well, 117 million gallons of water coming from a very tiny opening at the bottom of the spring on a daily basis will provide a current. And it's about a five mile an hour current. They're not swimming in a tank. There's so many different species of wildlife. You don't even know. The water is coming out with so much force, it wants to send you back up to the surface. You have to fight against it to get down there. A lot of like the, the time it took to get down to that diving bell was just fighting against the current to get down there because it's pushing upwards life that inhabit a florida river we get them all turtles otters a man the turtles are so fucking cute otters really i guess i'd heard about otters on the wikiwatchi river but i never saw one i don't think i ever once saw a single otter on the wikiwatchi river if i'd seen an otter i would have jumped in the water immediately to swim with it without a second's hesitation Turtles, otters, manatees are always a favorite. The turtles love to get in the way and they'll follow your tail around. We don't really have snakes come that often, every once in a while, blue moon, and then sometimes we'll get alligators. If they You're damn right. Sometimes we'd get alligators. There was a morning where I was opening, like I had a shift basically, that's like the early morning shift where you're like opening up the park. And my, I was the first shift of the day, and my first post, after, you know, cleaning things up and getting the, the park ready for guests, was to swim out into the water to the dock. I had dock post. We, we always have a lifeguard on the dock. If it's a really busy day, we might put two on there. So I was on the dock... And I was swimming out there, I was about halfway out there, and I notice the unmistakable fucking pattern that every Floridian can recognize of a goddamn alligator snout in the water with me. I dunk my head under as I'm swimming out to the dock, 
Because at this point, I'm closer to the dock than I am to the shore. And sure enough, it's a big alligator. And it's maybe 15 yards away. Pretty far. It's pretty far. It's like around here, and I'm like where his chest is, like relatively speaking. So it's, it, it would take a minute to get to me. I had time. So I just didn't provoke it. I just swam to the dock, and I got onto the dock, and I did my job, which was to blow three whistles. There are very few circumstances in which you're supposed to blow three whistles. The way things work there is one whistle is meant to get the attention of the guests. You whistle one loud tweet at a guest to get their attention, and that's when, you know, you, you do what you have to do with that guest, right? Two whistles, two tweets, tweet, tweet, really quickly together, that's to get the attention of other lifeguards for something, whatever it may be. Three tweets, but they're not tweets, three loud whistles is an emergency, whether it be someone's drowning, there needs to be an ambulance called, or... There's a fucking alligator in the water. Thankfully, it was very early and no guests were in yet, so it wasn't a very big deal. But I blow my three whistles. The manager comes out of the guard shack running up to the shore. And I'm just like, alligator! And I point at it. And the manager's just like, all right, stay there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so I, uh, I stay on the dock for about two hours. Because uh, I can't get in the water to switch shifts, and the water stays closed while they bring in guests, and they are not allowed in the water yet. And the alligator eventually goes down river, and uh, and uh, I end up swimming back to the shore, and we and go on with my day. I thankfully the alligator kind of was a real one because that was just straight up two hours where I was on the clock making money, stuck on that dock, getting to watch an alligator up close getting paid for it and not having to actually lifeguard because while I was on the dock, I was just there stuck. I was just stuck there. I, I wasn't actually on the post doing like the post cause there was no need to be. No one was allowed in the water. So I was just sitting there like I'm getting paid right now. My shift ends in four hours and I'm getting paid for, for all the time. I'm sitting here on this dock. Keep it coming alligator. All right. We'll get alligators. If they're in a range that's too close, we'll get out of the water. In the 60s, Wikiwachi was a spectacular, world-famous tourist attraction, but by the 90s, the consent- These are mullet. So these mullet here, if you're a Floridian, you've probably eaten mullet, and it is amazing. Smoked mullet dip is a very popular food in Florida. The thing about mullet is they're plant eaters, they're, herb they're herbivores, so you can't catch them on a hook. So you have to typically net them, and the way that Floridians will catch them, the way that I usually try to catch them, was with a cast net. Basically, it's a net that's on a rope, and you throw it out in the water, and it fans out, and it lands in the water, and you throw it at a big school of sheep's head, because these things like to school up in big schools, and you try to net as many as, of them as you can. They're very hard to catch, but they're very pretty fish. They're mullet. Really cool fish. They get big, too. And to suppose that it was a relic, dated and down its luck, at least compared to the shiny new theme parks that Disney and Universal were opening over in Orlando. In 2003, the New York Times called this place aging and faded. Aww. But it turns out that once something gets... It really isn't, though, if I'm being honest. Like, it's a very good park. It's just, like, at this point, it's not worth... It's just not something worth traveling the country to go to, you know? If you're in Florida and you're in the area, it's definitely worth going because you're going to get a taste of, like... But it's the kind of thing that Floridians go to. It's the kind of Floridian thing Floridians drive three hours out of town to go to or across the state to go to, maybe, because it's, like, a state landmark. But, like, outside of Florida, it's not that well-known, unfortunately. Hypers in chat if you didn't even know this place existed before this segment or before I talked about it at some point. That's a lot of you who had, who had never heard of this place before I told you about it. Yeah. I've been here, like, before I even worked there as a lifeguard, I've probably been there 30, 40... Well, counting the camp days, because those were, you know, multiple months of me going there every day for five days a week, um, hundreds of times. Like, probably a hundred times, actually, I'd, I'd been there before I even worked there from, as a job. So, I'm pretty, pretty familiar with this place. It's like a, like, I don't know, it's just really bizarre that somewhere so familiar to me, I'm seeing it in a video that has so many views right now. How long was the drive from where I lived at the time where I don't obviously I don't live there now, but where I lived at the time, it was literally a 15 minute drive away, maybe a little less. It's old enough with the right marketing. 
outdated can become retro, historic. Wikiwatchy Springs was a private company all the way up until 2008 when... This um, video is being taken in the government office building. This is where I did the... Um... This is where I did the interview in this building. It's up in the, the upper part of the park, a little bit towards the back. Um, there's a big oval, there's this big long room with a big oval desk. And that's where they had all of us sit down in a big circle and sign our job applications together. It was a very interesting, like very unique job application process. But this is the building where I signed the uh, application to, uh, to work there in. I recognize the paint. Have I ever ran into Burmese pythons? That's more of a problem than the Everglades, but I've seen many black racers and many cotton mouths, um, also known as water moccasins. A lot, a lot of those. And I've seen a couple of Florida diamondback rattlers. Not in the wild, but I've seen a few. Eight, when the state of Florida, in an effort to help save it, acquired the attraction. And not only they acquire it for the natural resource that we have here, the spring, the scrub habitat that surrounds the spring, but also because of the cultural significance of what... They do a, a, a different camp as well, other than, like different camp than the lifeguard one. That's the mermaid camp, um, where you, like, you can send your like daughter there. I guess you could send your son there, but like it was all girls, and I, I think you'd be very out of place if you were there and you were a boy. Um, but like... You know, do your thing, Queen, regardless. Um, anyway, the uh, uh, they do a mermaid camp, too, to learn how to do this. And it's a good thing they do that, too, because this is hard to learn. Like, they have to keep their legs together, like, stuck together in this suit. Like, most people, if you were just, like, in this situation there and now, you would drown. You literally wouldn't be able to get to the surface. You would just drown. Like, swimming and actually being able to maneuver like this is actually a lot harder than it looks and the cloth takes on weight from the water so you're heavier than uh than you are on land the mermaids have meant to florida tourism for seven decades now wiki watch is never going to be on the same level as walt disney world it, it couldn't be but i'm sure it is summer star but i just i never saw any any anyone who wasn't a girl in the uh the mermaid camp in all the time that i was there but the same day i'm here the Florida State Tourist Board have sent a crew to film. The last audition call for mermaids here made the news around the world, and the articles are sounding a lot more positive than they did 15 years ago. That's In the good. 21st century. So this is that, that's the scene change I was talking about where they blast the window with bubbles and they, uh, they, they change. I found a very rare rattlesnake in Wisconsin. Jesus. I barely know shit about snakes. Only ones I know about are garden snakes, rattlers, and the ones where it's red, red and black, friend of Jack, black and yellow, kill a fellow. It's um, Red Touch Black, Friend of Jack, Black Touch Yellow, fr Kill a Fellow. Um, it's what colors touch that matters. You've got the, the rhyme wrong. Wikiwatchy is becoming a bit of living history. History that still has three shows a day. Being a mermaid is the best job anyone could ask for. My favorite part of the job is um, dealing with the kids and making a difference in the community. We do a lot of dealing with Make-A-Wish programs and these kids think that you're really a mermaid and they think that every- Holding the American flag. Chat, you will not believe it, but they, they, this is the, they do this show. You can see they're in the outfits for it now where it's red, white, and blue, but it's underwater, so everything's blue. Um, uh, cause everything's blue shifted underwater. But like, basically, uh, they do the, I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. They, they, they play that song and they, they have the mermaids dressed in red, white, and blue and with the big American flag under the water. And, and everybody in the theater like stands there and does a fucking salute for the, for the song. And it's just blasting on the fucking speakers before the show. I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. Well, you guys don't even know how fucking patriotic it is in goddamn Florida, okay? As a Floridian, do you consider Trump a Floridian? Fuck no. Trump has never gone walking around in a goddamn patch of uh, uh, mangrove trees, stepped in a fire ant hill, or, or gotten pinched by a fucking blue crab, or, or gotten, like, a rash from sand getting in his uh, trunks at the beach. Or stung by a jellyfish in the water and had to have a friend piss on it. Like, he's not a Floridian.
hermit crab racing. He's never he never had a bunch of pet fl- fiddler crabs as a kid. What el- what other Floridian ass things that I did? He didn't learn how to es- evade alligators in school. I did. I learned how to evade alligators in school. That's what happens when you're in, when you grow up in Florida. They teach you how to avoid pursuit from an alligator. Not well, but still. Don't actually pee on your friend's stings. Yeah, it's a, it's a myth that comes from Floridians is the pissing on your friend's stings thing. But, you know, it. if you get stung at the beach, everyone's going to insist that they piss on you. Just kind of a Florida thing. Everything you're doing is so magical. Just making such a difference in their lives just by coming to work. We're pretty lucky that we can do that. Thanks to all the team at Winky Watchy Springs State Park. You can find out more about them at the link. God, but I'll, I'll tell you, my time there was a lot of fun. All right, my time there was a whole lot of fun. I'd even consider like working part time there. Uh, uh, again, just to just to be able to do like the occasional video while I'm on break, somewhere in the park, because it's just such a, it's such a vibe there. Like days that I have off, I'd be able to go. You can go there for free on days that you have off. So I'd go there on days that I have off to film videos. That would be awesome. North Florida, still Florida. It's not North Florida. It's on, it's in Central Florida on the West Coast. It looks like a cool place. It's a really cool place. I highly recommend going there if you're in the area and uh, if you visit the area. It's so f-ing cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed some of my stories. There, I hope I hope they were able to help you learn a little bit about me.